how I weathered this sawmill for the DDWC3. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you step by step how I did it. Hey, and welcome to the channel. This is Brian with the Iron Horse Root. And like I said before, this is my entry to the DDWC3. That's right, the Down and Dirty Weather and Contest 3. And what you're looking at right now are stills of the kit a couple weeks ago before I finished it and had done any weather into it. And I saw that John, when this video came out about the DDWC3, I was very excited. I reached out to him with an email and he accepted my application. The DDWC2 was the very first video I did with my for my channel, basically, that I was in myself. So I was pleased to see they were doing this one again. And I'm pleased to be here with you. What I did right now is, if I did a good job editing, you should see the beginning of me doing the sun bleaching because that's the first uh, step that I did in this process of weathering today. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show my work in the big screen and myself in pick and pick. We should be moving to that right now. And I'll be explaining to you, um, to the best of my ability, how, when, and why I did something. So, um, I do have other videos about model railroading, so if you're new to the channel, I want to encourage you to subscribe, click the bell icon, share this with the other modeling friends. But regardless, I'm glad that you're here, and I hope that you'll like the video if you feel that way. Let's get to work, y'all. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the sun bleaching process, which is basically just using the actual color of the thing you're working on um, with water base and a little white to dilute the color, or mute the color a little bit like the sun has bleached it. Um, I'm going to be doing that on the entire model. And what I'll be doing throughout the video is I'll be trying to... Um, put text boxes and things in here to explain what I'm doing and I'll be doing a voiceover and putting pictures um, in place of me um, during the voiceover where applicable as well um, and I'm continuing the sun bleaching process right here with the burnt sienna um, on the uh, model itself on the sides of the model itself um, I am not an experienced modeler and I don't have a lot of modeling, um, of weathering um, equipment or tools or uh, add-ons, bells and whistles, if you will. Um, I use very basic stuff and I'm pretty inexperienced. Most of the time, the, pro uh, the materials that I used um, for this are a thin brush, a toothpick, a graphite stick, acrylic paints, uh, water, um, popsicle sticks for example and so I kept it real simple um, very inexpensive and used what I had around here and did the uh, work to the best of my ability um, I am happy with the end product though um, and so again we're still looking at the sun bleaching process after it dried and um, it did turn out well I was happy how this turned out um, do a lot of work on that conveyor right there where those logs come in in this video as well. Um, this is just dirt, sawdust, road grime using a thin brush, a ratio, ratio of 15 4 to 1. That's 15 parts water, 4 parts burnt umber, and 1 part white. Just to make a dirty, grimy look. And I'm going to go basically throughout this video at some point in and out. I'll go be going over the entire model with this. Um, and again, I'll put the text box up when I do it to let you know what phase I'm in. Um, happy with this as well. Um, I do have a spot up there I don't like, and I think I actually fixed it later. So, I uh, do a lot of work on that overhang in here too. This, I sprayed the model there. Okay, the first thing I did, I misted the model there. And I am using a ratio of 21 to 1, a black wash with a little gray. It's one part black, one part gray, 20 parts water. And I misted the model with water. Okay. One of the things I also did was I soaked the tip of that toothpick in the uh, wash for about 20 minutes before I started. And I found that that looks good, looked good there. Um, what happened is I took a little break and caught my breath and when I came back I started using the um, 
same wash. Well, and it wasn't running. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Now, I did want that side heavier because back there is the slash burner right there behind it. There you see I sprayed it. It had gotten dry. You do need to mist if you want that to run. Um, or in my case, I had to. I tried to get that little uh, air duct right there as dirty as I could get. Again, there's that slash burner behind that thing is burns trash woods that ugly brown thing back there um, you burn your trash wood in that and all their scraps from the sawmill and the lumber in the process and um, everything they're gonna burn in that brown building back there the office to the left in the brown um, structure behind it there are not weathered for this contest or any part of it um, it doesn't look any different at the end of the video as it does but I'll be working on the rest still doing the step two where this is the road grime this is that same burnt umber wash I was talking about earlier and um, I am gonna put when I go DCC plus plus I am gonna put a uh, orange or a flame colored light in that slash burner I think um, I had a little trouble getting to the back back there, but um, I did kind of, well, because well, I'm lazy. What I wanted to do is keep the lights hooked up and uh, because I enjoy having them on. And so I didn't want to change anything. So what we're doing here is I'm just actually doing a bleach of the green metal. And so anywhere I had that um, metal kind of iron uh, stuff, I used a green and then I bleached it. Um, I put the ratio in behind there and I didn't read that. For those of you that didn't catch that, you'll have to back up. I apologize. Um, and a good look at this. Now very happy with how this is looking. Um, still a lot got to do. And um, this is the soot. I'm going to um, emulating the soot from the slash burner using a number two artist graphite block. Just uh, the same one I used to use on my track before I started using CRC 226 and that no ox. And so I went over the model. Um, the graphite stick was excellent to use because those windows right there, um, the seals and the, the frame on the windows were very slick and i had not roughed them up or scuffed them up or dull coated them and so it used using that graphite uh, stick worked well because it uh regular paint probably wasn't going to stick to it well um now i'm going over the bleached green metal with the uh, dirt and grime wash you'll see down at the bottom i got some plaster uh I actually went in there and filled in those areas um, and so when I did as much as I tried just the stuff from my fingers got on the bottom of the model there and so I'm gonna have to kind of repair that a little bit I had to go in and do some touch-ups and that's what I'm doing now touch-ups from that plaster and if I'm not mistaken, I'm back on the uh, bleached green metal that had been grimed. And now I'm going over it with the soot deposits uh, on the graphite stick. Just getting some more. I got plaster everywhere. And I'm happy with that. That came out well. Um, for basically, for particularly the way it looked previously. Um, I didn't like the way I had it before I fixed it. And uh, that's a nice shot, I think. I'm proud of that right there and so what do we got to do I about three quarters of the way through this project I figured out that I could go get the cake decorator from the kitchen and put the model on it I had to turn my lights off because I had to disconnect the lights but man I could spin it and that made it nice I'm working on the floor for the overhang now I, I did not like that floor all i did was make a brown base here like a uh basically just um uh, a wood or a dirt color or something in there i didn't like the the gray especially with the fact that i was going to be laying the wood planks over top and so i just kind of drew i drew the wood on popsicle sticks and then i, I lightly weathered the wood with a burn umber wash 
and um, then I'm going to slide it in there and I'm going to weather it a little more with some dirty, uh, dirty grimy um, stuff to emulate the truck um, prints. And that's a burn umber wash that's on that, a 20 to 1. And uh, I come in a little later and I put truck tires back there because Jerry's going to be pulling in and out of that other side. And I'm also going to need to, SRV John told me or mentioned to me and it made me help me to remember. And I'm going to put some forklift uh, tracks in there as well. And um, what I'm doing now is I'm making the clean process lumber that's going to go on top of the conveyor. All right, and these are the uh, these are thick popsicle sticks from Dollar General. They cost a whole dollar for the pack, and I used about a twentieth of the pack on this project. And um, just drawing the actual cut lumber pieces on there to give that impression. You can see that a little better further down in the video. And just cutting the uh, stacks for lumber now. I'm gonna I glue the stacks together. I've got assorted sizes for uh, different types of people. Whether I'm getting it, it could be getting picked up by 18 wheeler. It could be getting picked up by 14 or 12 wheeler. Um, it could also be being picked up by a pickup truck, for example. So I've got assorted sizes over there. I am very happy with the way that area turned out in there. It does look neat. Uh, Jerry's got a nice place to park now where he, do, he can get out of the weather if needed. Previously, he didn't have really a place to get out of the weather around here, um, with his truck at least. And he likes to do, go live from his truck, y'all know. So look, he'll be able to do that, stay out of the weather now. And we're going to do a little rotation here. This is basically um, completed. I'm not sure that uh, I did much, if anything, past this point. Um, it is set in the 1950s and would have probably been built in the 20s or 30s, I think. And so, right there with uh, multiple tracks and turnouts all around it. You got a dam behind it that's going to be throwing out mist and water to mix with the soot coming from the slash burner. I figured it'd be pretty dirty. So, uh, thank you very much for watching today, but don't go anywhere because this video is not over yet. All right, I want to encourage you to stick around for just a minute for the best part. I'm going to have the longest train I can handle around here for today running through this weathered model so you can see some good looks at it from ground view etc and so on And I want to thank you for sticking in and watching with me today. I do appreciate it. Again, if you have not already, I want to encourage you to subscribe, click the bell icon, and make sure you like this video if you felt that way. I also want to really encourage you to share this video for me, particularly if you're a creator yourself and a model railroader yourself, and you may have subs that don't know about me or that I don't know about either that would get me to get us exposed to each other. Please share this. I don't use other platforms as well, so if you use Facebook or anything like that, I want to encourage you to share that as well for me. This is Brian with the Iron Horse Room, home of the Denver and Rio Grande Western. This is my entry to the DDWC3. Y'all take care. Good to see you.